Brady Singer made his first start of the spring. What do we think about it? We'll tell you next on Locked on Royals. You are Locked on Royals, your daily Kansas City Royals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. You are tuned into another edition of Locked On Royals on the Locked On Podcast Network. As always, I'm your host, Jack Johnson, and you can follow me on Twitter at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J O H N Y J underscore 15. You also can find us on wherever you may be getting your podcast. That can be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Odyssey. We're also on YouTube. Just be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. If you're a first time listener, of course, welcome in. We always love new listeners here on the Lockdown Podcast Network. And if you want to know a little bit more about me, if you want to get more information on my sports background, well, I work here in Kansas City at Sports Ready Way 10 WHB. Got a show once a week over there. And then Monday through Friday, I've got a show on ESPN Kansas City, uh, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. So if you ever want to check me out over there, uh, catch my thoughts on things that may not always pertain to Major League Baseball Uh, you can easily find me over there. But when you click on this podcast link, when you're looking for Royals baseball, this is the place to come to five episodes a week. Sometimes they come to you in the morning, they come to you in the afternoon or in the evening, the late evening as it is uh, right now as I'm recording this podcast. Uh, But just know that every single week, I'm going to try my best to get five episodes out a week. That is the goal. I'm not going to say from week to week. It might be three. Next week will be be a little bit different. I'm going out of town. Might only get four episodes next week. But uh, again, shouldn't be too much of a problem to get those four out. I'll be out of town Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So the week after that, I might have to do one weekend episode just to catch up on those five episodes a week. So next week. Might be looking closer to four episodes. Week after that, five episodes, but we'll extend into the weekend. And that's what I want to do. If I ever have to change up my schedule a little bit, I don't want to skimp any of the listeners or the followers with only like two episodes a week because we're in full swing of spring training. And it was actually funny. One of the the YouTube commenters uh, was uh, saying or responding at least to what I did yesterday about spring training, how it can be boring. And he's like, don't speak for me. Uh, I never find Royals baseball boring. And I was like, you know, it's not so much that I find spring training boring. It's I think every fan goes through it once you get like 15 games in. You're like, all right, I'm ready for the real deal here. I'm tired of exhibition games. Like baseball is great. We we talk about this every single day. We have five episodes a week. I obviously have to love the Royals and love baseball to do five episodes a week. Uh, So that's not really an issue for me. But for spring training, man, I want to get to the part where these things do matter, where the wins and losses matter, the numbers matter, the stats matter. And right now, all we're left with is just hoping that these can translate over. And I think one guy we're hoping can translate the success he had today into the regular season is Brady Singer. And good news for the Royals. I mean, these don't matter. The stats don't matter. But as I think I also said in Monday's episode, like they don't matter. At least you want to have the confidence that you're doing well. Like you can always fall back if you struggle of it is spring training, but you also can look at it and say, hey, I pitched pretty well. I threw the ball well. I felt good. It felt good out of my hand. And I'm sure that's what every single member of the Royals rotation has felt like following their outing. I mean, Cole Reagans, Seth Lugo, Michael Walker, and Brady Singer haven't allowed a run. Uh, They've also had a pretty good strikeout numbers for the inning they threw, the two innings that they threw. Hard to be disappointed with the first four guys that went. Now, Jordan Lyles throws tomorrow. We might have a little bit more of a podcast segment on him and what he looked like. But Brady Singer today against Seattle, I thought was very sharp. And it seemed like he was utilizing a couple of his new pitches. I know that some people were asking me you know, what he was throwing. Unfortunately, baseball does not make it that accessible to find that information. I've tried extensively to go to StatCast to find ways to look at what pitches are being thrown, how hard they're throwing it, the spin rate, you know, the swing and miss count. I can't find it. I have to go through the game day app and game day app also doesn't really update pitch by pitch. It's usually just if it's an out, a walk, a hit, a run. 
that's when they're updating. So to me, it was very limited knowledge, and I have to wait for the highlights to be posted at the end of the game. But Brady Singer threw two scoreless innings, only allowed one hit, and he had three strikeouts, no walks. From what was being said, from the word coming out of spring training, he looked pretty good. Uh, It looked like he was mixing and matching a lot of his different pitches. I did see on one of his strikeouts, he utilized that changeup. That's going to be a big part of his success. But I I actually go back to 2022 and the numbers that he put out there and compare them to 2023. Look, it's all fine and dandy for Brady Singer to have multiple pitches. It is a good thing to be able to turn to a third pitch or a fourth pitch. But if I'm being quite honest and I'm being transparent about this all, I do not think it matters unless Brady Singer's velocity comes back and the velocity that he had in 2022. That sets up everything in his arsenal. Last year, there was not that big of a a difference in his two-seam sinker that he would throw and his slider. Uh, You go back to last year, I think he was sitting anywhere from 91 to 93, maybe topping out at 95 on a good day. And his slider was 84, 85, 86. And you go back to 2022, that two-seam and sinker, sometimes in a couple of, of pitches in a row, consecutive pitches, it'd be 95, 96, 97. And that slider could be a firm 87 or 88. And that made his pitch because of the run it had, the horizontal movement, to become at times virtually unhittable. And maybe it was the shortened spring training he had last year. The good thing for him this go around, there's no hiccup. There's no WBC. He's going to have a start every fifth day or so. He'll probably ramp it up to three innings next time out, and then four innings, and then you'll see where you're at from there. Uh, But to me, the velocity is so important. Building up that arm again, making sure the velocity comes back. Because I've gotten to the point where he can have a change up. He can throw in that four seamer. Uh, he can throw in the sweeper. If the velocity is not there on his main pitches, I don't think it's going to be that hard to differentiate what he's throwing if you're a hitter. You know, last year we saw it. He couldn't set up the slider as well because his two seamer sinker was running around 91, 92. You know, it was a near two mile per hour difference on his sinker you know, per the, the baseball savant numbers. That's a huge jump or a huge dip, I should say, for a starter. Now, the good thing for him, what I'm sure a lot of people are factoring in here and why he feels like a good bounce back candidate, I believe I picked him as my X factor in yesterday's episode. He doesn't have the pressure of being a number one or a number two. At this point, it's, Let's just hope Brady Singer works out. Let's hope he reverts to form. It's not he has to be the guy because he's the fourth best pitcher in this rotation. He's behind Reagans. He's behind Waka. He's behind Lugo. Now, to me, you can take that and run with it. You know, people are expecting things of me. We're not treating Brady Singer like Jordan Lyles. But... He is closer to the Jordan Lyles expectation than he is for the Cole Reagans expectation. And that's the beauty of having somebody like Brady Singer as your number four starter. Because if he looks like he did in 2022, then you've got an unbelievable one-two, really, in Brady Singer and Cole Reagans, and then your threes and fours are Waka and Lugo. Now, all of a sudden, as we brought up in the X-Factor segment, it's a pretty good-looking rotation. But it was a good first step today. I think you can feel good about what you saw from Brady Singer. Mixed and matched a little bit. Uh, It seemed like the velocity was fine. Uh, You want to see him use maybe even more of those new pitches like the sweeper, like the four seed moving forward through spring training. But when you throw about 30 pitches or a little bit under that, if you're freaking out about the dosage he had of the four seam and the sweeper, don't be freaking out about it. It was 30 pitches. In fact, I think it was a little bit under that, if I'm not mistaken. He got three strikeouts, didn't walk anybody, gave up one hit. You take that and you move on. I have no complaints whatsoever about what I've seen from the Royals starting pitchers so far, seven games through spring training. Okay, we're going to take our first break of the show. When we come back, a guy who's in no man's land a little bit. I think it's Nick Prado. Now, he's looked so good, or he's looked good so far, 
in spring training. He's already got a home run. He had a hit earlier today. But what do you do with Nick Prado? Like I said, no man's land. Let's talk about that next on Locked on Royals. You are tuning to Locked on Royals on the Locked on Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. Be sure to give me a follow on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore one five. Before we go any further, want to give a shout out to the title sponsor today in FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning. $5 bet. That's 150 bucks if your team wins. Bet on all your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same game parlays, exclusive props, and more. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, the official sportsbook partner of the NBA. And basketball, of course, in full swing. Start figuring out how to make money over on FanDuel. March Madness, conference tournaments, the NBA playoffs, they're all going to be coming up here in the coming months, in the coming weeks. So you want to familiarize yourself with the app. What are the best bets to go with? The hottest bets, FanDuel, they're going to have you covered. So after this podcast episode, go over there, create your account, and use that code Locked On MLB. Very important you do so. And they're a very proud sponsor. Nearly every time we post one of our podcast episodes in the Locked On Podcast Network. Okay, so looking at Nick Prado, what he's done so far in spring training, and the things you can take away in two games, which is not much, of course. But I think we can look at Nick Prado in the situation of the 2024 Royals and go, I don't know where you play him. Uh, There are some followers that I have that are much higher on Nick Prado than maybe I am. I know there's some people that think that he's a gold glove first baseman. I would strongly refute that. I do not think he's a good defensive first baseman. I think Vinny Pasquantino is very much interchangeable defensive-wise with Nick Prado. And I would take Vinny's bat 100 times over Nick Prado. Do I believe that you just punt on him as a prospect or punt on him as a player? Absolutely not. I think that he should be in that same category as an MJ Melendez. If we're going to give MJ, you know, the second chance or the third chance, well, Prado deserves one as well. What MJ has going for him, though, is that He's not a big strikeout hitter. I mean, he he does strike out more than you would want to, but Nick Prado was in the pitcher range. He was striking out 40% of the time last year. I mean, nearly a coin flip. I know it's not exactly 50%, but that's about as close as you can get to 50% as a position player swinging a bat. Now, MJ Melendez, he at least has a walk rate in the double digits, and he hits the ball incredibly hard. I know he's not a great fielder, but again, I I don't think Nick Prado's that great of a fielder either. But I'm also rooting for him in spring training because I'm not going to give up on him as a prospect. I'm not going to give up on him as some form of an everyday player. There are aspects to his game that he has to change if he is ever going to be playing every single day in Kansas City. I mean, I, I go back to last year that I think it was in Early July, his OBP was still near 350. Like He was getting on base at a high clip. He was one of the few guys in the lineup you could count on to get on base. He was a leadoff hitter for a little bit of time. Matt Quattrero went with the unique approach. Uh, you put a first baseman, not too quick, but a high OBP guy at the top of your lineup. Now, it didn't last that long because once we got to August, Nick Prado tailed off. He got hurt. He started striking out a hell of a lot more. Than he was at the beginning of the year. And then by the end of it, it was, I don't even think this guy is a everyday player anymore. I don't think you can pencil this guy in for the lineup in 2024. And the Royals aren't going to do that. I would you know, put my chips in right now that he's going to begin the year in AAA law, even with a good spring, because who does he push out? I would say the only possibility would be if Nelson Velasquez bombs in spring training, which so far he hasn't been incredible. But Nick Prado's also had a very small game sample size. We have 20-plus games to go before we can truly make that decision. But that's the only guy I think he would bump out. Vinny Pasquantino's going to play first base. They may rotate a little bit, and Vinny will get some time at DH. But Nick Prado right now is in that no-man's land. You know, he doesn't have a good enough bat where it's, we got to just put him out there somewhere because his bat is so good. Right? Some hitters force you to put them in the lineup. Like, just 
Throw him in left, throw him in right, throw him at first, throw him at third. They're such a good hitter, I'll take bad defense out there. Problem is, Nick Prado's not that great of a hitter. Even when he was getting on base at a high clip, it wasn't like he was torching the ball. He was uh, kind of being a singles hitter, which is fine. A single, double, triple, home run, you're getting on base. A walk is the same as a single. You just reach first base. You feel good about it. But to me, I wanted to see a little bit more of that upside. I wanted to see a first baseman that could you know, play at a high level for a full season. I wanted to see the hard hit rate go up. I wanted to see the barrel percentage go up. I wanted to see the home run power go from 5 to 10 to 10 to 15 or 15 to 20. I really wanted to see that surge for Nick Prado in year two, but it was a bad end to the year. Now, I also understand that injuries can cause problems. Uh, they can make you feel uncomfortable at the plate. You don't really have your rhythm. I think Kyle Isbell uh, had that same issue. And I believe he said one of the main things on his mind is staying healthy. You know, that's at the top of his list. If I stay healthy, I feel good in my abilities. And maybe Nick Prado thinks the exact same way. When I feel good, when I feel healthy, I trust my game. I trust my approach at the plate. And those are important things to bring up. But I, I just, I, I feel like the Royals are at a spot right now where they need to know if Nick Prado is or isn't a player pretty soon. You know, I tweeted this out, and again, you can follow me on Twitter or X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. He needs a big spring. Like, he has to have a big spring to get back on the radar. Because right now, with the way the Royals have gone a little bit all in to try to compete for an American League Central title, He's not fitting into that conversation. They want Melendez in left. They want Isbell in center. They want Renfro in right. They want Velasquez DHing. They want Vinny at first. And since he's a left-hander, no, that rules out third base. So you're either a first baseman, DH, or corner outfielder. All those spots are taken up right now. So he can start the year in AAA. He can be that guy right off the bat, that is, you know, the the first man on the highway to get to Kansas City from Omaha. He can be that first man up or that second man up, but is he an everyday player? And that's going to be what the Royals have to identify. And we have seen over the course of decades, really, the Royals have let guys walk away or DFA guys that seem hopeless, seem lost. I mean, Ryan O'Hearn was as lost as you could be. People were just furious that he'd be in the lineup, hitting fourth, hitting fifth with his 160 batting average. And then, of course, he goes to Baltimore on a cheap deal, and he becomes a, a great bench bat for them. And eventually starts in the playoffs. Like Ryan O'Hearn did that. So if I saw Ryan O'Hearn make that change, go from what he was in Kansas City to what he was in Baltimore, I think the Royals could do the same with Nick Prado, but not see him do it for another club. Not let him walk and go, well, like he's just another guy that's going to catch on somewhere. Now, Brent Rooker was in a Royals uniform for a few weeks. They DFA him. He gets picked up by Oakland. And last year, he's an all-star for the Oakland A's. It can happen. Change of scenery is a big part of players' successes. I mean, look at Cole Reagans. It's not like the Royals are the only team that coughs up players and they catch on elsewhere. I mean, the Rangers traded Cole Reagans, likely not thinking he could become this, because if that was a possibility, they never would have included him in that trade. So Major League Baseball is always going to have guys that catch on elsewhere. They like the change of scenery. It gives them more confidence. It gives them a boost. And I don't want to see that with Nick Prado but right now, I don't see an opportunity for him to get everyday bats in Kansas City. If Nelson Velasquez struggles, or Hunter Renfro, who's been dealing with his back tightness, can't stay healthy, well, the, the door opens up a little bit. He's got an opportunity like that. But the only thing he can control right now is his success in spring training. If he hits well and he forces his way onto the roster, well, that's good for him. Because he can't really control the roster moves the Royals make. I mean, he can try his best to hit 450 with eight home runs and walk away from surprise Arizona is the clear favorite, the clear MVP. But the Royals can still look at him and say, hey, we just don't have a spot for you right now. Keep up that 
work in, in Omaha and you'll be up to Kansas City in no time. He can't control the roster construction. All he can control is how he looks in spring. And so far, so good for Nick Prado. Before we move on to our final segment, I want to give a shout out to Locked On Sports today. It's here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. When we return, I'm going to tell you one aspect so far in spring training that is concerning me just a little bit. We'll dive into that next on Locked On Royals. You are tuning to Locked On Royals and the Locked On Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jack Johnson. Be sure to give me a follow on Twitter X at JohnnyJ underscore 15. That's at J-O-H-N-Y-J underscore 15. Also, you can catch us on wherever you get your podcast, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts, Odyssey. We're also on YouTube. Just be sure to hit that follow button and subscribe. Before we go any further, I want to give a shout out to the other title sponsor today in game time. Now, opening day is one month away, so go and buy your tickets so you can catch the Royals and Twins on March 28th. Take the day off work and enjoy baseball in the regular season for the first time on the year. But when buying tickets, go over to game time and do so. If there's a concert that's caught your eye, if there's a comedy show that's caught your eye, or you've just been wanting to go to some form of an event, whether it's a sporting game or it's a concert, or some type of gathering, game time is the place to go to. I'm going to a concert next weekend in Texas, and you guessed it, I bought those tickets on game time. They make it so simple for you, uh, whether you're going by yourself, you're going with a group of people like I am. They just have all the great deals for you right there. They show you the best spots, the best prices, and they take away all the hassle, all the stress, all the worry uh, when you are buying those tickets. So here's what you need to do. Go and download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for twenty dollars off on your first purchase. Those terms apply. So again, create an account and redeem code L O C K E D O N for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. So spring training is all about evaluating yourself. It's all about seeing what some guys look like. It's your first chance on the year to to see your new free agents, your prospects, your trade acquisitions in, in game action. Though they're exhibition games, it's against other players, it's against other teams, other franchises, other coaches, other managers. You know, it's as close to the regular season as you're going to get. You can talk about winter ball and feel good about it, but it's not your team playing. It's players you know, bouncing around, playing for their country, playing for teams back in their country. And that's a really cool deal. I mean, we covered extensively Michael Garcia's surge over in the Venezuelan Winter League. Also, Nelson Velasquez's performance in the, the Puerto Rican Winter League. Daniel Lynch uh, was, I think, pitching in the Dominican Winter League a few times. So we had seen these guys over the winter get some game action. But spring training is different. Right? Spring training is your team. You were seeing your players, your prospects, your coaches, everything about it. And... The scary thing about spring training, which I go back to what the commenter had on our previous episode of, well, I don't find it boring at all. Baseball is baseball. The winter was boring to me. Now I get to see the Royals in game action. It's great. And I love that. And I'm not saying that it, it bores me to death. That was never my point of it. But it can be stressful. I think that it can really be a stressful thing for somebody that covers or watches this team or is a diehard fan or you're just an average Joe fan. You want this team to be healthy. Bar none, health is the most important thing. And it feels good that the Royals are 5-2. and two. Like, I, If the games don't matter, I still think winning is better than losing. I wouldn't enjoy it if the Royals were losing 15 to nothing every single game in spring training. That obviously wouldn't be a great sign for the regular season, even though the games don't matter. And there's guys that are just getting their work in. They're getting comfortable uh, back in the swing of things. But if there's one concern I have so far this season, or this spring training, I should say, it has been the health, to be honest with you. I was not expecting to already have two guys that are dealing with some form of a nagging injury. I mean, one prospect already had his season ended in Christian Chamberlain. I don't know if Christian Chamberlain would have had a great opportunity to compete in the Royals' bullpen through spring training, but he was there for a reason. They have high hopes 
for a guy like Christian Chamberlain. And then he had one outing and towards UCL. You just feel gutted for a guy like that. And Carlos Hernandez, you know, he's dealing with an arm problem. I think it was a shoulder problem, shoulder tightness. He throws a live BP, didn't respond well. Now he's got a setback. And that concerns me, even though Carlos Hernandez is the fifth, sixth, or seventh option out of the bullpen. You know, it's not a spot that I think has the best of depth, if I'm being quite honest with you. And then Hunter Renfro, we haven't seen him so far this spring because of back tightness. I thought he was supposed to play today, but maybe they're just being extra cautious. And that's usually the way it goes in spring training. You want to be cautious. You don't want to force anybody to play. But to me, that's the anxious part of this all. That's the anxiety creeping up in me of, boy, they're they're skating by right now. Some guys are dealing with the tightness and the soreness and they're not getting into game action. And you want a lot of these guys to just get the reps. I would love to bubble wrap as many guys as you can and say, just show up for the regular season. But the reality is a full spring training is good for guys going into the regular season. You don't want to be on ice. You don't want to be ice cold going into the regular season. You have to have some form of of repetition in you. You have to have some form of a rhythm. And every game that passes, you know, because you're not really getting the full access. You're not watching all of these games. And all of a sudden you could see someone pop up on your timeline of a key player for the Royals that's battling an injury. Now, I remember he used to get so just nervous and battling the, the butterflies and the anxiety of, of watching Adalberto Montesi in spring training. It was like, please, God, just get him through this month. And you could see him get hurt five games in. Sometimes he'd make it through the entire spring training, and then he'd be hurt on the final day, or he'd get hurt in April. You know, it just it's like a scarring thing. And when you witness that, it's like, man, with all this expectation, all this hype, the only thing that can stunt that momentum, can just take the the wind out of the sails, is injuries the key, guys. And that's why I look at the record. I'm like, five and two, looks good. It's seven games in, but there's 20 plus more to go. And a lot of these starters are still going to be getting reps. And it's just, it's the, the anxiousness of it. It's like watching preseason football. It's like, please... Do not leave the starters out there long. I don't want to see them out there long. I just want to get to the real deal, want to get the regular season. And I know we're a month away. We're a month away, and these guys have to get the reps. But if I'm being quite honest, some early concerns, I'm not liking it that there's already been some some setbacks, some guys that are battling tightness, soreness. It can happen early on in spring training, just hoping this is a full slate of healthy guys once they break camp here at the end of March. Okay, before we say goodbye for the night, one last shout out to Locked On Sports today. It's here for you 24 7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports today now, available on the free Fire TV channels app. Tomorrow, we're going to dive into a little bit of what Jordan Lyles looked like in his start and some takeaways from the game tomorrow afternoon. But until then, you take it easy, Kansas City.